Welcome to episode two of the Material Retail Dumps podcast. My name is Elliot and I'll be your host today. Material Retail Dumps is a short form podcast with brief but valuable content for independent retailers selling clothing, home goods, stationery, and more. As business owners, we don't have time for a 30 minute lesson with a ton of banter. That's why we created our podcast. We get straight to the meat of the topic and aim to give you actionable information that will help you make more money every this day. This is the first in a series of episodes designed to help independent retailers improve cash flow and increase gross profit dollars by managing inventory more efficiently. During hard t- economic times, when customers are more likely to buy gas than clothing, it's extremely important to manage cash. Cash, cash flow is the lifeblood of any business. For independent retailers, cash flow management can be the make or break. This episode is geared towards fashion retailers. However, it can be applied to many brick and mortar businesses. Retailers in general have high fixed costs, such as rent, payroll, utility bills, and more. One thing that most retailers don't take into account is that a large portion of your cash will be tied up in inventory. After all, you need products to sell. Being a small business, you may not find many vendors who are willing to give you credit. And even when you get to that point, sometimes the 30 days of credit is not long enough to sell the product. Most of the time, you've been forced to lay out the cash for a product before you even sell it. Some owners will resort to carrying balances on credit cards when buying merchandise which then brings interest payments into the equation, making the cost of goods even more expensive. This brings us to the importance of selling your products quickly, or maybe more importantly, knowing when you're stuck with a dog and when it's time to dump it. So what's a dog? It's a product that you bought that just isn't selling. Say you've purchased six pieces of five different styles from a vendor, and in the first month you sell through half of the four styles, but of one of the styles, you've only sold one or even zero. That's your dog. Simply put, a dog is a bad style, a bad purchase, something that you need to get rid of. Every business needs to identify when to consider a product a dog. A good rule of thumb is if something is selling half as quickly as your average product. For example, if your inventory turn is six times per year, it should take you two months to sell through a product. If after one month, you've only sold one of the six pieces you purchased in that style, you're on pace to sell through the product in six months, which is three times worse than your average product. All right, so now that you've identified a dog, what do you do with it? Now, here's where a lot of retailers run into trouble. Many retailers will make excuses for why an item isn't selling. Sometimes they're valid. For example, if you bought a sweater in August and it's still 85 degrees on the East Coast, in that case, you can wait for the fall cold weather to come in. However, sometimes the excuses are emotional and not valid. For example, my good customers haven't come into the store yet. Or if I just put this item on this rack or in the window, it'll sell for sure. Thinking like this and creating excuses for why items aren't selling yet can be keeping money out of your pocket. So what should we do? We should, once we identify a dog, we should mark the product down, be fast and be aggressive. Go straight to 50% off if you need, just get your money back. You're gonna probably ask, why would I do that? If I wait six months, I could just sell the product at full price or for just 10% off. Well, that's the wrong way of thinking. Let's look at the math and see what you can do. First, we'll look at a dog that you've sold slowly, holding on for the most margin percentage. First, let's assume you bought six pieces of an item for $20 each, costing you a total of $120. In the first month, you sell one at full price. In the second month, second and third months, you sell another two for 10% off, gives you $90. Then in the fourth month, you sell another one at 20% off, that gives you $40. And then in the sixth month, you finally sell another two at 50 off, bringing in another $50. So in six months, you've done $230 in sales and you made 110 in gross profit dollars. Now, let's look at a product you've identified as a dog and aggressively marked down. So again, first you're buying six pieces of an item for $20 each, costing you $120. In the first month, you sell one at full price, $50. Now, you know this is a dog. You only sold one in the first month. Take you six months to sell it. So you mark it down to 50% off. In month two, you sell the next five at 50 off, bringing in a total of $125. So in two months, you brought $175 in sales and only $55 in gross profit. Now, you're still in month two. So you take that original $120 and you go buy another six pieces of a style for $20 each. Now this style just happens to be a good seller and you have four months to make your money still. In month three, you sell two of those items at $50. In month four, you sell another one at $50. In month five, you sell another two at 20 off, $40 each, that brings you $80. And finally, in month six, you sell the last one for 25 bucks. In total, for the second style, you've done $255 in sales and $135 in gross profit dollars.
in six months with the product you identified as a dog, sold it at 50% off really quickly, bought a new style, and sold that one decently, you did $430 in sales and $190 in gross profit dollars. All right, that was a lot of numbers. In short, let's compare the two. In the first example, you were hesitating to mark down the dog and you did $110 in gross profits in six months. In the second example, you did $190 in gross profits. That's a 72% increase in gross profit dollars in the same period of time with that same $120, $120 being laid out. If you do that 100 times in a year or even 50 times in a year, I guarantee you'll notice a big difference when you look at your income statement. So what do we learn exactly? What are the three main takeaways? Number one, don't get emotionally invested in your inventory. It's all about numbers. If the numbers aren't showing strength, you have your signal to start taking markdowns aggressively. Number two, once you identify a dog, be very aggressive in marking it down and getting out of your store. Don't go 10% off. Don't go 15% off. Go straight to 40 off, 50 off, even 60 off if it's garbage. And number three, just because you sell something cheaper than you originally wanted to doesn't mean you'll make less money. It means you'll be freeing up cash and more importantly, space in your store to get a new good style that you can sell at strong margins. Well, that's it for today. We're looking forward to the next episode in this series about gross margins, gross profit dollars, and cash.